hello and welcome back to another video we're going straight in with this one and doing some product design so i really wanted to make some bookmarks and to do a test i was using some old artwork this is my bunch of tits that i did which is a bunch of garden birds um of the tit family that i made for stickers um i did this last year i believe um and i wanted to create them into um a little bookmark so i took the artwork which had a white border on for the stickers i left that on just for ease and then i went ahead and used the magnetic lasso and the remove background tool on photoshop um a lot of this has been a bit of a learning curve i don't really use Photoshop very often and I'm trying to teach myself a little bit more so I've been learning some few bits so you will be learning with me on this it was quite a lot of trial and error um but I went ahead and removed that background just cleaned up little bits added bits in that the background removed that I didn't want it to remove that were you know areas that are kind of close in colour to the background so on that beat there was a white area that obviously mimicked the white paper um, and then I went ahead and saved a copy of each of the birds individually because they were all on one page um, and just named them the bird name um, with underscore 300 to let me know that it was in 300 dpi that's just um, how I've learned from my partner how to file sort out everything and it's very clear so I know the various um, aspects of, of those files um, and then I made a new file which was um, I think it was like 2,000 or 3,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels um, a square file and then I actually went into view and applied a pattern preview so that al allows me to have this white around that square canvas um, which will repeat my pattern so I went ahead and brought in all five birds there individually and decided to scale them up so they filled the square and then just subtly moved them and transformed them a little bit um, to try and fill that space and um, you know create create that repeat pattern um, I did do a lot of shifting around and there were a lot of white space on this iteration um, then I went to edit and define pattern and that adds the pattern to my um, pattern library as it as just the square image um, where that the images are in the square um, and this allows me to bring that in and use it as a pattern and it will use it as a repeat pattern no matter what kind of I've got you can see it on the right there that is my repeat pattern then I realized I wasn't very happy with it um, I brought it in it was too too much white space not enough repeating for my liking um, so I did try and figure out how to you know shift it around and fiddle with it a bit more but in the end I actually decided to create another pattern by duplicating the birds twice so I have two of each birds within that square um, and it allowed me to really shift them about and fiddle with the, the various um, locations to try and fit them together a bit better annoyingly birds have those <laughs> pesky little tails and they definitely um, cause some issues with tessellating um, and then I realized that maybe flipping some of the birds around so that they were not all facing the same direction as the original artwork so I used command T to do that and I just flipped horizontally and that flipped the birds around um, to face a different way and again I just fiddled with that and just um, just just basically tried to fill that space and not have so much white space um, and like I say this went through so many iterations and a lot of playing about like I say I'm not massively familiar with photoshop and all the different functions are so complex and so much you can do with it and it really took me a long time to get my head around it as you can see here there's a lot of me fiddling around trying to find the various tabs to do the various things um and then here i created um I don't know if this was, I think this was my final iteration of the birds, but I basically created an A4 sheet because I know that's what I'm printing at and I wanted it to be borderless and print at that. Um, and so I did, uh, I went to tab layer and went to new fill layer um, and then brought the, uh, clicked the correct uh, pattern and um, just selected the scale at 40 and that just allowed me to have that kind of smaller scale that I know would work well with the bookmarks. So then I went ahead into Illustrator and I designed my bookmark. So for this, I just guessed the sizing for the time being because I knew I wanted, um, 
I just wanted to do a base test. So I guess the sizing of 15 centimeters long by five centimeters wide, and then I added five mil flanges onto the corners and a five mil um, circumference circle as the hole. And then I went ahead and tessellated that. So I did that in, um, I did that in Illustrator and then brought it into Photoshop as a vector. I did a few errors here, so I, I made this tessellation, realized that when I brought it into Cricut, it would just cut a, a box, it wouldn't cut my lines quite as well. So I brought them as a, in as singular bookmarks and allowed Cricut to tessellate. However, it didn't tessellate it quite as tight, so I was wasting a lot of paper. And also, I realized that it once I'd started cutting, which you see in a minute, that it actually cuts either side of the black line, which was not what we wanted. Um, so I did go ahead at a later date, which you will hear me talk about a bit later, and I actually remade that vector in Illustrator to be a white solid image, and that allowed it to cut just around. I didn't, I took off the border, it was just a white solid image, and it cut around the, the image perfectly without cutting either side of the line. So that's how I did that there, um, and I just need to, um, just need to put it into Cricut and allow it to cut away. So this is me printing and um, putting onto the mat and then cutting from Cricut. Um, and it worked really well. Um, this was a great test and I'm gonna leave you to watch the rest of the video because there's some thoughts and feelings and then I actually end up uh, skipping the end of the video and redoing part of it at a much better size. That was Freddie jumping off the chair at the loud noise. <laughs> um, but yes, I, I end up skipping this and um, redoing it at the correct size to my packaging um, that I researched and on better cardstock and it is really much better. But I will let you listen to my thoughts and feelings and listen to the ASMR of the machinery whirring away, doing my bidding um, and I'll catch up with you very shortly. I was really really pleased with the print quality look at that that's incredible from my Epson printer it is an eco tank I'll put the actual name of it at the bottom here um, but it um, it printed beautifully as you saw that's how I did my repeat pattern and then I just put it on a4 I know I didn't want to put this into um, Cricut and I didn't I didn't want it to do a print and cut because you waste like this much border of your paper and I thought let's try it a different way so this is why I did it this way in hindsight there were <laughs> multiple things like I've mentioned that went wrong with how I brought that into Cricut but that is a learning curve and I will do it very differently next time so because of the uh, thick black lines it cut twice um, this is also not on my thickest paper that I would be doing these on this is just a test paper um, so it's not not the final thickness of the bookmark. I also <laughs> realized that these side ones are obviously gonna have the bird sideways, which is not ideal. So um, they're probably not going to be how I want them. Um, but let's have a look at the ones that should work because they're upright. Let me get these up. Okay, not that one.
we went through quite a lot of iterations. I clipped out that um, final uh, footage because I wasn't really happy with the final the final footage um, and product design. So we went through quite a lot of iterations. So the first iteration was this. I guessed the size. This is what you saw me designing. Um, I was bugged by the fact that the bird had tails facing the same way there it just you could see the line where i designed the pattern so i wasn't very happy with that and um, i then printed it on some test card which is not really card it's kind of just thick paper um and all in all it was nice it was just not the best quality so that's where we ended off and that's where i cut the footage of me kind of signing off the video then i went back in and i sorted the patterning so all I did was see this bird here that's facing the same way. There's three in a row. I actually just flipped that and it's completely broken it up. And it has really, really made the difference. As you can see, there's no definite line there where the pattern starts and the pattern ends. Um, so that's really, really good. And then I I printed this out on some 300 GSM card that I, I've been using for like earring packaging and things for my stalls um, and it's thick card it's good but it's still it's still not the thickest and it just it, it just didn't feel the quality I wanted it so that brings us to the final iteration so I have recently bought some card from paper mill direct and um, for my prints and for making greeting cards and that is also 300 gsm however it feels thicker than this and just is a better quality it is an art grade paper um because i wanted to make prints with it so i then went ahead and printed it you can definitely see the difference on the print quality i don't know if the camera will pick it up um but it's just a clearer print a very clean print a very nice print and that's worked out way nicer so i printed it on that and as you can see it is it is way thicker we have a cat come on friends off you get please thank you very much um so this is the thinner 300 gsm and this is the thicker it's just it's it's just thicker in general you can see my cricut actually had some issues print um cutting through this so i had to do a double cut however i've just i've just ordered um some uh, i've just ordered a new blade that will cut a bit thicker which is good a deep point blade um but as you can see there's a little bit of texture i don't know if you can pick that up but there is a bit of texture to this this fine art grade paper so that's definitely what i'm going to use um and then i toyed with not having a hole in it at all and then i quite liked this very rustic it's a bit floppy at the moment it needs ironing out but this very rustic kind of finish which I tied in two different ways so one is doing a bit of a braid on top which and obviously these will be chopped off which I'm not sure about I think it looks quite nice but this might look better poking out the top like I say if we straighten that out it will be perfect Um, so yeah I think that's a great finished product it feels sturdier it feels nicer it's got a lovely texture to it and it's got a really good print quality and that is the final product there so I think we have created a good product i've ordered some packaging for it and this is the size that i wanted in the packaging so as you can see from that original guess at the size it's a little bit wider a little bit longer um and it works really well i can fit a good amount on the sheets um with just a thin strip um kind of of waste paper so i think i'm going to figure out how to use that as maybe a belly band for future products um which will be really handy so that is the final design i just need to make some more um, patterns and some more artwork and I will have a whole range of bookmarks so I'm hoping to do my shop update by the end of March hopefully so if you are looking to bag one of these please set the reminders and I will post on YouTube again um, to let you know so make sure you are subscribed and hit that notification bell so you know when I've posted and thank you very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed the process and learning with me because it's all been a big learning process for me and I will see you in the next video.